From the Berger Varsity Football House, it's National Signing Day here at Lafayette College and all over the country. Always a big day for high school seniors and juniors as they figure out what they're going to do in their college football career. And we're always happy to start that day and start that career. It gives me great pleasure to start the uh, John Troxel era. So we want to welcome all the fans, all the alumni, all the recruits, their parents, and the coaches to today's uh, news. And John, we of course welcome you. Congratulations on becoming the new head football coach. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's great to be back home and we're really excited about uh, the class we're bringing in. It's hard to believe that this is the 10th year of recruiting scholarship players in the Patriot League. Uh, so obviously it's, it's all established and ready to go. Not quite the case for you, however, as you were hired late, uh, therefore you had to hit the ground running. Yeah, we really did, you know. So the first priority was to put a staff together. Uh, which we put together a great staff, uh, and once we got up and running, uh, you know, we had basically two weeks from January mm -hmm. 15, 14th when the dead period ended until now to, to land a class. Now, fortunately for us, uh, the previous staff had, had, had committed 13 guys. We were able to hold on to 10 of those, which we're forever grateful that they, they took a leap of faith with us and with our staff that they were going to do a great job with, with them. and. Uh, you know, they, they gave their word to Lafayette, and it means a lot to me to know the type of character that we're getting in those kids, and they are some great players in that group. That's certainly a credit to both the institution, Lafayette as an educational institution, and obviously to the football program and to uh, your ability to convince them that uh, things looking good on the horizon. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of excitement right now around the program uh, and, and a lot of excitement coming from our, not just our alumni and the institution, but from, uh, from high school coaches around the area mm -hmm. uh, in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, calls that I've got. So I think we have a lot of people that are going to be pulling for us uh, trying to help us in this recruiting effort. We're going to talk about 15 today. There are probably about five or six we can't talk about because of NCAA rules and things that haven't been uh, done quite yet. But you've got kids uh, on the offensive side, eight of them. You've got seven kids on the defensive side. That's a nice balance. Uh, from Pennsylvania, you have three, New Jersey, five, Maryland, two, Florida, a couple, Georgia, Michigan, Texas. So even that is nice diversity throughout the United States. Yeah, I mean, we're going to leave no stone unturned. We're going to find good football players wherever we can find them. Uh, you know, obviously, we want to try and control our backyard in terms mm -hmm. of getting kids from the Boston area down to Richmond to Pittsburgh and back. Uh, but there's great football in Texas. There's great football in Florida and Georgia. And, uh, and the kids that we got are just their outstanding young men. Did a good job positionally. I know you had some, some necessary needs uh, coming back on this football team. So you got four offensive linemen, certainly yeah. an area where we needed some help. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're excited about those kids. It's definitely an area where we needed to add some depth, uh, get guys who can come in and compete uh, after losing a bunch off of last year's team. And also, you know, on the back end in the secondary, you know, mm -hmm. getting, getting a good group of, of athletes back there to help. Uh, build some depth as we move along because we are going to lose some guys, you know, after this season mm -hmm. as well. No running backs coming in yet. I know you have a couple that probably will be here, but yep. Michael Hayes is back, Jaden Hutton is back, so it's not like the cupboard is bare at, at that position. No, I mean, there's four really good kids there, you know, uh, Najee Adams, who's Najee an Eastern Ad kid, mm -hmm. so uh, we're excited about those kids. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, again, everybody on our team is going to be basically a freshman because we're going to be installing a new offense, new defense, mm -hmm. so we have to get our kids to, to pick up those things quickly. Uh, we don't want to go into preseason camp and still trying to learn. We want to make sure that this, this spring practice time is, uh, is, is used wisely. Well, the youngsters have a lot of opportunity to learn from Joe Gillette, Julius Young, Jordan Hall, KJ Rogers. You have a nice stable of wide receivers. You picked up a couple new ones. Yeah, we did. So, uh, you know, you mentioned Puda Hayes, who's a tailback here. His brother, Amari's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, Amari brings a, a lot of speed. Uh, he played on an AA stamp, uh, championship team down in Florida, Venice High School, and uh, you know he, he has some explosiveness and, and something that we need desperately, um, just in, in a, in a change-up for us, you know, in the slot. Uh, and then we also have Elijah Stewart, who, man, he can track a ball, he can run, He's dynamite. Uh, he's coming from South Jersey, and, and we couldn't be more excited to have him as well. And we will tell you, we'll get a look at every one of these uh, that Coach is talking about. A couple of quarterbacks coming in as you have uh, a Sean Davis. You've got two others on the roster, so uh, that's a good group to choose from, and, and they all have their own skills and talents. Yeah, talking about the guys we have, I mean, I'm really excited because all three of them have experience, mm -hmm. and you can't replace experience in a college game. Uh, you know, obviously, 
uh, we have to limit the, the amount of sacks that we gave up, and we have to be able to move the pocket a little bit more and keep those guys upright. But, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing some great competition out of those three kids uh, who, who should make us uh, a better football team this year. Defensive line's going to certainly need some help. you got one right now uh, in, the, in the fold, lost Malik Ham, one of the greatest we've ever had here. Yeah. But Colin Harrelbrink, Ian Grayson back, and they can certainly help develop the youngsters. Yeah, there's no doubt, and we're excited to have them back for a fifth year. Uh, when they came and talked to me, I was, I was energetic and mm -hmm. like, yes, we'd love to have you back. Um, and obviously, uh, they're great leaders. You watch them in the weight room already, mm -hmm. and they're, mm -hmm. uh, they're getting after the young guys. So we couldn't be more thrilled about them. Uh, you know, Damon Washington's back, and he's, he's played a big part up front. Uh, you know, so we're, we're really excited about uh, where, where we're going to be defensively as a whole as we move into the season. A couple of linebackers lost. Uh, again, two terrific players, Billy Schaefer and uh, Major Jordan. But you've got Marco Olivas, probably yeah. as good as any linebacker in the league. Preston Forney, Jair Stevens. Yeah. Those are guys that uh, will continue to get the job done on the defensive side. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're great kids. A couple of them are banged up. Uh, mm -hmm. Billy Schaefer is coming back. Oh, I did so, not know yeah, that. Yeah, so okay. we're, we're really excited about that. So he came to see me too, so he's going to take his He just his loves the year. game. So. He, does, <laughs> yeah. he does love the yeah. game. What a great kid. Uh, and Marco, he's a fantastic leader. You know, from the time I met him, I just, you know, you could tell he's a football player. Mm -hmm. It's really important to him. Uh, and, you know, he's going uh, to lead this team. He's going to make sure we're doing things right and guys are accountable. So we're and usually your best athletes are defensive backs. I know you picked up four of those to go along with Jordan and Sekou and Shakai. And uh, so hopefully that also will be a strong area once you get them here on campus. Yeah, absolutely, you know, and, uh, you know, when you watch those guys, I mean, the, the older guys were some of the heart and soul of the defense, you know, I mean, they made a lot of plays, um, you know, but as, as, like, yeah, and as we look ahead, and so we graduate some of that experience, the young group that mm -hmm. we're bringing in is going to be fantastic. All right, let's start on the offensive side. I know you want to get a look at some of these young men in action. We're going to start with Spencer Adams, maybe one of the best. Offensive lineman, 6'4", 320 pounds out of Darnstown, Maryland, Northwest High School. His ball club went 11 and 2, and this is a big boy. Yeah, so uh, Spencer right now is probably about 330, I would think. And, uh, you know, he's a powerful kid, uh, and he can move for his size. Uh, so we needed some size up front. You know, the one thing we're talking about with our young kids is becoming more physical and being able to move people. You know, sometimes when you get into inside zone and stuff, you talk about. Uh, offensive lineman being finesse, well, we're not going to be that. And <laughs> you can tell this is a guy who loves to put people on the ground. So we're really excited about him. And as always, uh, they're great academic students. He won a John Hopkins University Dependent Scholarship for Academic Performance, Academic Excellence as an African American at his school. Uh, so that is normally the story. I don't think anybody on this list is not part of an honor, honor roll program somewhere. Absolutely. You know, he's captain of his football team and. So he's a leader, and, uh, and like I said, we, we're looking for guys with character that love football, and he fits that mold. That's Spencer Adams, and uh, we certainly look forward to him coming here. I'm not sure the college wants to feed him, but uh, <laughs> he will be ready to play some football for sure when he gets here. Next up is Brian Basha, offensive lineman, 6'2", 300 pounds, out of Crofton, Maryland. He went to Spalding High School. He was all Metro first team in Baltimore. Yeah, Brian, Brian's a steel force. You know, Brian's a physical kid. Uh, you know, he comes from a football family. His, his, his dad played college football and, uh, you know, is now an offensive coordinator down in, in the Maryland area at St. Francis. So he's grown up with it, mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and that's a big part of uh, his love for the game. And like I said, he's a physical kid, uh, you know, 300 pounder. Mm -hmm. And again, we're talking about moving people. He's going to move some people. And, uh, and we're really excited about him joining us. Part of a Spalding program that had the best record in their history, ended up 10-1, and 10-0 and during the regular season. He's another one of those great young men. He volunteers at football camps. He serves the homeless. He does cooking at a local pantry. And as you mentioned, his father did play football at Virginia Tech, so he's got it in his blood. And as you see here on film, he can move people around along that offensive line. Yeah, and he was a first-team All-MIAA player. Again, another kid who was a captain. So again, when you talk about getting uh, guys in your program that are leaders, mm -hmm. you know, when you can find kids where their peers and their coaches select them as captains, that means they get a lot of respect for their character and who they are. And, and Brian's a tremendous young man. We're really excited. Never seems to be much of a problem here when the kids come to Lafayette College. Next up, Reed Collins, another offensive lineman, 6'5", 275. 
Always like to get kids out of Jacksonville, Florida, out of the Florida area. Bowles School was his high school. Two-time Florida Class 4A All-State selection. Yeah, Reed, you know, he led his, uh, his team to uh, two 4A four, four state runner-up uh, appearances. And uh, so he's played a lot of football at a, at a very high level. Uh, again, he's going to be another tremendous offensive lineman that we bring in here to help us. Um, you know, you can't ask for more than, than a guy who just is gritty and, uh, and plays hard. And as you watch his tape, you know, there's, there's no plays that this man takes off. He also is, and I probably would have loved to have seen him in the position. He was a center on their high school basketball team. At 6'5", 275, I would assume he got a lot of rebounds. Yeah, I mean, he's probably boxing a lot of people out and stuff, <laughs> but uh, we're going to keep him away from our basketball program, make sure he's on the football field for us. So you see him in action. He does a terrific job. There he is on the uh, defensive end spot or the offensive end. And again, he just goes out. He gets to that second level, which you really like in any big lineman. Yeah, and for, for a big guy, like I said, you know, these, these guys move pretty well and they'll be able to get to the second level, you know, um, much, like, much like any freshman. I mean, you know, I think they'll come in with, with uh, having to gain some strength, you mm -hmm, know, getting mm -hmm. our weight program with Coach Potts, and it'll just make them that much better football players. How about a quarterback? We've got another one in Dean DeNoble. He's 6'1", 175, Upper Saddle River, New Jersey, played for Morris Catholic. He was all county, all league, threw for over 4,000 yards and had 44 touchdowns in his career. He's got a nice arm. Yeah, Dean's, uh, Dean's a great kid. He's got a, a good release. He's got good feet. Uh, you know, he's athletic too, which uh, always helps. He can get himself out of trouble, as you see there. Uh, so we know he can run the ball a little bit. But yeah, his arm is impeccable. You know, 44 touchdowns. Uh, his interception to touchdown ratio was really good. And like I said, we're, we're thrilled that he'll be here with us slinging it around. You see his strong arm, but he's also got great awareness, as you see him there. Uh, getting looked like Mahomes a little bit there, the way he kept people from hitting him. Yeah, and you know, you talk about escapability, you know, and it's things that, that make you successful. You know, when you have third and four and, and maybe you don't have anywhere to go with the ball, that you can pull it down, get the first down, move the sticks, and, uh, and Dean brings that to the table. And that's almost something you have to have as a sixth sense as a quarterback. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to teach them to make those perfect moves sometimes. Just have a sense of when people are around you. Yeah, I mean, the, the very best quarterbacks, uh, they, they have just an innate, innate ability to, to make things happen. He works at a church soup kitchen, so obviously a, a great young man. He was a member of the Challenge Organization, another voluntary uh, organization for his high school. You mentioned Michael Hayes, his brother. Well, we have him right now, Amari <laughs> Hayes, wide receiver, 5'9", 165, out of Sarasota, Florida. Venice High School led his team to the 8A state championship in 2021. And I imagine he's kind of quick because he can do it all. Uh, he can. I mean, he can return. Uh, he's, he'll be a great screen guy. Get it to him in space and let him run. Again, very explosive. Um, you know, just, you know, I think he had, you know, for high school too, I think he had almost 70 catches, which is, is a lot for a high school kid. And uh, he made a lot of plays. And, and again, he was a big, big part of them winning a state championship down uh, in Florida in the AA class too, which is the biggest down there. And in that state championship game, when you're going up against the very best in an opponent, he had eight catches for 78 yards, a touchdown, nine carries for 26 yards. And uh, he beat Apopka down there, which if you're familiar with Florida schools, uh, they're certainly one of the best. And he loves being in the Wildcat formation too. I guess. Yeah, yeah, any way they could get it to him, they got it to him. And again, he's got great twitch. Uh, you know, and again, in space, he'll be a problem and a, and, a, and a matchup nightmare for some linebackers and strong safeties in this league. Michael's a great young man here on campus, and uh, I'm sure it'll be nice to have two Hayes. Oh, uh, no doubt about it. You know, and uh, first time I met him, he's like, they just call me Puda. <laughs> and I, so, and uh, he's been called that since he's been a kid. And his, his dad was just up here with Amari and again, a great family and uh, absolutely love him. Before we started the program, he was putting new shoes on, and I said, you look even faster than we know you are. So he was getting ready to go outside and do a workout. Robbie Mandel, offensive lineman, 6'5", 275, out of Ramsey, New Jersey. First team, all super football conference, secured all league, all county honors, and you always like to get wrestlers. Wrestlers have great feet. They do, they do, and uh, you know they have great balance as well. And Robbie's just, uh, we're, we're thrilled we got him as well. You know, he was one of the guys, when I had a chance to talk to him, he was considering going to uh, Rhode Island. And, uh, you know, he changed his mind and he, he stayed committed to Lafayette. And, 
you know, I, like I said, I couldn't be happier you did that. And, and uh, he's going to be a big part of what we do down the road. He's definitely a guy that can play out on the edge at tackle because uh, he has the feet for it. And again, he's, a, he's another kid who's, who's a physical kid, uh, you know, puts people on the ground, and that's what we're looking for. You know, you get a guy 6'5", uh, and he's 275 already. You get a sense that uh, he'll be 300, certainly, within the next year or so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's the big part, you know, is getting them with Coach Potts and, and developing these guys, you know. And, you know, sometimes guys come in as young guys and, and they play. Sometimes they need to wait and they need to develop. And, uh, you know, but like I said, for him, the one thing we love is that he finishes. And you always see him finishing at the end of plays mm -hmm. and putting people on the ground so he doesn't stop. So we go back to quarterback. We said you picked up two of them, Robbie Schuster, or Ryan yeah. Schuster, I'm sorry, yep. the other Ryan. one at quarterback, 6'2", 195, Make of Michigan, Chippewa Valley is where he played his high school ball, two-time All-State, honorable mention, selection. Uh, this young man, 2,976 yards passing, 28 passing touchdowns, a three-year starter uh, on the basketball team, yeah. so obviously very athletic. Very athletic. I mean, that was one of the things that we really liked is that he had, uh, you know, he plays on the basketball team. And, and again, a kid who, you know, threw for, you know, 28 touchdowns and almost 3,000 yards in high school, uh, again, has great escapability, a really good arm. And, uh, you know, as a leader of his team, you know, not just his, his football team, but also his basketball team. That's the play right there that I think demonstrates. That, that looks like an NFL play. He just zips that ball yeah. on a wide receiver slant, got it right in his belly. Yeah, he's got great velocity, uh, can make almost every throw, and has great touches you see right there. So, again, just a, a, going to be a real pleasure to coach and, uh, and watch him compete, you know, and I think he's going to be a good Patriot League quarterback. Good vision. You see him picking out wide open receivers once he even gets a little pressure and he finds them anyway and really delivers the ball in a perfect spot yeah another great young man quick release yeah. quick release quick release he's part of the fellowship of christian athletes so uh, another terrific young man coming here to lafayette elijah stewart is up next he's a wide receiver 510 165 galloway new jersey played at holy spirit all state first team selection he led the state in receiving touchdowns, and he amassed over 1,000 receiving yards, over 2,000 in his career, 131 receptions and 30 touchdowns. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that great? You know, so, yeah. Uh, uh, Eli is just, we're really lucky that we got him. Uh, again, he tracks the ball as good as any kid that I've ever seen. I, you know, he doesn't drop it. You know, we had a kid here once named Mark Ross who probably didn't drop many balls. Mm, yes. Then he, he threw it up, he went and got it. This is one of those guys who just... It, it, it just goes right to his hands. Um, but again, a kid who had 30 touchdowns, you know, not many high school guys have over 1,000 yards receiving in a season. And again, he was their go-to guy. He could go up and get it. Four guys and, around him. Man. Yeah, and, and he played for one of Lafayette's finest, Charlie Roman. And Charlie Hi. and I were teammates back mm -hmm. in 1991. And uh, I know what Charlie thinks of him. And uh, like I said, he's got great twitch, great hands, and he's going to be a great one. He's also a terrific track athlete, which you love because you know how athletic uh, he is and speed-wise. He uh, actually has the state title in the long jump, so yeah, he can I, do it all. Yeah, and I think he ran uh, sub 10-9, mm -hmm. so that's, that's running pretty good. Pretty good number. Yeah, pretty so good we're excited, numbers yeah. And another great kid. He's a camp counselor. He's been doing that for a couple of years. Uh, nothing but the best come to Lafayette College. We're going to call a timeout. Up next will be the defensive recruits. Stay with us. This is National Signing Day.